furtive. That's the word Dad used, to get furtive. Parahand has been furtive ever since we left Inverary. Yes, <clears throat> furtive, that's the word, furtive. <laughs> A beautiful word, darling. You know, your command of the English language would do credit to a cabinet minister. <laughs> but you really think that Parahandy wants to get rid of us? I'm telling you, Doogie is up to something and he wants us out the road while he does it. Oh, how else would he send Sonny Jim in a tanner bus run to the other end of the tune? He sent him for a gallon of paint. <laughs> to the art galleries. <laughs> now you just made that one up, MacPhail. I'm telling you, Doogie, he wants us out the road. Ah, by Joe, lads, by Joe, eh? Hey, how are you still here? We should be outside seeing all the splendid things that's happening in the world. Like what things? Why, like the fine big funeral that's just gone past. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, what a procession. Sixteen motors no count in the hearse. And as for the flowers, oh, you would think the botanic gardens had sprung a leak. I will, I'll be away by by this time. Not at all. They were moving, gay, respectful. Eh, hey, you could still catch up with it if you ran after it. Ah, well, I've got one or two things to attend to here, Captain. Not at all, Doogie. All work and no play. Away after the funeral. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> what if? Hey, I think you're trying to get ready us. What? Never. No, the only thought in my head was for the welfare of the crew. After a long, hard voyage, you should be relaxing. Get rid of you, eh? What an idea. Eh, if I gave you the money, would you go to the pictures? <laughs> I can't go anywhere till Dougie finishes his darn. Oh, Dan, Dan, you're, you're too clothes conscious. You're turning into a regular dandy. Well, there we are, Dan. Now, uh, do you want this other hole, Dan? <laughs> Oh, no, just leave it to get allow my foot to breathe. <laughs> Fine. Well, would you mind just biting the wool off at the knot? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, no, Dougie, I can't. I haven't been doing that for since I was three years old. Uh, well, I don't fancy doing it. So we'll just moor it with a clove hedge to your big toes. <laughs> That's fine. Ah, oh, well, lads, uh, please yourselves. I'll away out for a wee stroll. I'll, uh, I'll maybe see you later, eh? Hey, Captain, I went to the art galleries. Here, they don't sell paint. <laughs> What's that? What? That bottle you've got behind your back. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, that, that is uh, my meds. I'm supposed to carry it around for my seizures. <laughs> <laughs> seizures? When did you start getting seizures? Oh, well, I haven't so far, but there's no point in waiting till the last minute. <laughs> Man, but you're provident, Captain. Mind you, I never heard of the National Health issuing medicine and lemonade bottles. Uh, give me that, oh, you devil, Dookie. It's whiskey. Man, what whiskey? Oh, it's running circles round my tonsils. No, it's killing its way down my throat. Where is it now? It's just arrived. Man. It's like listening to a masked choir of angels singing the hallelujah chorus in Gaelic. <laughs> and you were going to keep it to your sail, eh? Oh, you furtive, definitely furtive. Now, Dan, you just don't understand the position. I understand, all right. Once you'd got us out the road, you were going to get stoned in this. <laughs> oh, nectar. <laughs> and you were going to keep it to your sail, eh? No, I was not. That is a traveller's sample. Oh, I? And who's the traveller, eh? Me. <laughs> that whiskey was made by my cousin Angus in Arran. What? Oh. And that used to work in a distillery? Yeah, he'd been retired this last ten years. But well, you see, he thought he should take up a wee hobby just to keep his hand in, you understand? You mean the stuff is hooch? <laughs> you mind your language, MacPhail. Oh, here. Has he got any more of this stuff, Cat? Ah, well, uh, he's got a barrel of the stiff. A whole barrel? <laughs> he wants me to sell it for him. A whole barrel must be worth at least a couple of hundred pounds, eh? Oh, I dare say. You see, his daughter is getting married, and it's hard to sit and buy a happy couple a, a grand piano for their new council house. <laughs> Man, why doesn't he set them off on the road to matrimonial bliss by just giving them the whiskey? <laughs> that would be lovely, wouldn't it? I can just see the minister's face at the show of presents. <laughs> Here it crosses my mind, Captain. You'll maybe not be doing this just for nothing. 
Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm taking a wee commission for my time and trouble. Just enough to cover my expenses, so to speak. How much? <clears throat> well, come on, how much? Half of what I get for it. <laughs> we're rich. We're rich. What do you mean, Sonny James? We are rich. Angus is my cousin. And, and I never thought we would ever be involved in smuggling and breaking the law like this. Do you think we should just make a clean breast of it? Ach, well, maybe if we just confessed to you, they'd just put us on probation. After all, we didn't know the stuff was aboard, did we? Probation, just as you say. Mind you, there is one of us going to lose his master's ticket and get sent to jail. But I dare say they'll go easy on Sonny Jim, on account of his youth. Hey, Oh, I, I, I'm just a boy. Aye, led astray by an older man. You read about it all the time. <laughs> I uh, thought this sort of thing would happen. All right. How much is four into a hundred? Thank you. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> It's yourself, Captain. Aye, it is indeed, Mr. McCutcheon. Aye, I, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to use your refreshments. Oh. Oh. And uh, have a wee snifter to yourself while you're at it. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. I, I, I'll have the same. <laughs> well, Jim, this is a fine wee pub, is it not, there? Uh, oh, uh, aye, Captain, it's got class. I mean, there's not many pubs that have got fitted wall-to-wall -wall sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, four whiskies and one for myself. Eh? That's your pound dead. <laughs> ah, it's a good blend, this. Right. Sells very well. <laughs> right. Well, here's Tess. Slash. <laughs> What did you do that for? Ah, well, we, we, we just didn't fancy drinking it. No, you see, we just come in for the use of your glasses and to enjoy the social atmospherics. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this whiskey. I sell more of this blend than any other. What's the matter with it? Ah, oh, well, uh, let's just say that uh, we prefer our own. <laughs> we'll say nothing of that kind. I don't run a pub for you to bring on your own booze. I've got a living to make. Oh, I buy job, Mr. McCutcheon. Wouldn't let see your wee children running around without shoes to their feet. No, no. I tell you what. Every time we have a drop of our own, we'll buy our own from you. We don't mind paying for it, as long as you don't expect us to drink it. <laughs> so we'll just have the same again. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. No, it's no. What were my other customers thinking to see you pour it into the slops? Ah, well, well, you have a point there, Mr. McCutcheon. I tell you what, just you pour your whiskey into an old petrol tin and Jim here can use it for lighting the navigation lamps. <laughs> <laughs> I sell good stuff. What's so special about yours? Ah, well, we just couldn't explain it. Hey, try some for yourself. Listening to the Hamden Road set to music. <laughs> ah, it's a drop of the real stuff. Oh, what's it called? Eh, uh, wh what's it called? Eh, uh, uh, yeah, Healingman's Bliss. <laughs> Healingman's Bliss, eh? Oh, that's a new one in me, eh? And who makes it? Eh, uh, the captain. <laughs> oh, I see, it's uh, just a small distillery, family concern. You'll not have heard about it. Most of the stuff goes for the exports. Aye, we're only allowed to buy it on condition that we drink it outside the three mile limit. Oh, I, I, I don't suppose you could get me a few bottles, eh? Just on the quiet, like. I'm willing to pay over the odds. Ah, oh, by Jove, but you don't know what you're asking. I mean, the exports would have the matter raised in Parliament. Uh, Captain, uh, do you not think you could do Mr. McCutcheon a wee favour? I mean, he's been very generous with his credit. I don't think he'd tell anybody. Oh, not a word. Not a word. <laughs> ah, well, maybe I could drop a wee note to my, the managing director <laughs> asking if he could spare a barrel. A barrel? 
to be climbing in the windy to get it. Oh, Captain, you'll be my friend for life. And you can rely on my complete discretion. Hey, Mr. McCutcheon, try some more of ours. <laughs> Stole pigeons, next minute it's full steam ahead. You can't shoot a powerful piece of machinery like that. Hey, we're heading away for the pier. I know. We've just this minute seen the police arresting my cousin Angus. The police, sir. Another three minutes they would have had us too. Man, Captain, that was a narrow escape you had. Aye, it was. What do you mean a narrow escape I had? Oh, you were keen enough to share in the money, MacPhail. You're not backing out now. You're as much involved as I am. Is that not right, Doogie? Uh, involved in what, Captain? <laughs> what whiskey? You know, fine, hot whiskey. Ah, by Jove. Oh, it's a sad day when a man's own shipmates desert him in his hour of trouble. We're going in. You're not turning back, Captain. I am not. If I hadn't brought to Angus telling him to meet us on the pier, he wouldn't have been arrested. Carrying loyalty too far. Uh, loyalty, but fail. A word you don't even know the meaning of. I'm telling you, if my cousin Angus thought I let him down, he would be fair, hurt, and disappointed. Anyway, he might just decide to show the police that letter I wrote him. amongst ourselves. There was no point in running away, Dan. They'd only have caught us in the long run. Not at all. We could have made it dead easy if you'd done what I told you to do. Damn me, who ever heard of a steam puffer crossing the Atlantic? <laughs> That's right, Dan. I would have needed at least another two bags of coal. <laughs> well, Ireland then. We could have made Ireland dead easy. It wouldn't have worked, Dan. They'd have sent work to the Interpolis. What? <laughs> the Interpolis. Man, they're the very devils for extradition. Not at all, not at all. Have you never heard of political asylums? <laughs> Why, Jove, get into one of these places and you might never get out again. <laughs> I've got a cousin in Barra, I'm telling ah, you... And I... besides, distilling whiskey is not a political offence. It's against the government, isn't it? It's not the same thing at all. Ah, well, you two be quiet. Let me think. It's your thinking that got us into this in the first place. <laughs> no, no. Get abroad, that's the answer. Yes, I could carve out a new life for myself. Maybe even change my name. What would you change it to, Dan? Hey? Well, now, Jims, I've... I've always... I don't know, but I've... I've always kind of fancied Victor. <laughs> Oh, no. I see you mere as a robber. It's funny, I've always thought of you as a robber. Robert? Aye. Robert MacPhail. You know, that doesn't sound too bad, that Jim. <laughs> what are you blathering about? It's my second name and change. <laughs> well, you're not going abroad in my boat, and that's the end of it. Victor Robert Dan MacPhail, or whatever the devil you call yourself. <laughs> Now then, Dookie, did 
you recognize that policeman that was sitting at the end of the pier? I've never seen him before, Captain. Ah, me neither. If it was the sergeant, it would be a different story. But, well, since I don't know him, the chances are he doesn't know me. What did you have in mind, Captain? Oh, just a wee chat, that's all. A wee chat. <laughs> Man, we have in trouble this time, right enough. Now, let's just think for a bit, and maybe we'll be able to see a way out of it. <laughs> Here! I've got it! What? what? How about Kenny? <laughs> Jane! The way things are, it's not names we'll be having. It's numbers. <laughs> Have I, Joe? Eh? <coughs> Have I, Joe? It's going to be a bad one, eh? I didn't see you there. I, I was no. just saying to my mate, Doogie, would you look at that? Polis wants devotion to duty, sitting out there without even as much as an umbrella. An umbrella? What would I want with an umbrella? It's not raining. Ah, well, you see, it's always like that just before a hurricane. <laughs> what hurricane? Ah, you let have heard the shipping forecast, eh? Oh, man, it's leaving a, a trail of devastation. Boats are sinking and licensed premises have been flooded. Get away. I'm telling you, if Dougie was here, he would tell you. There are prefabricated houses in Glasgow that used to be in Edinburgh. <laughs> and it's heading this way. If I was you, I would go home and get a raincoat. Is that so? Hmm. Well, I don't think the sergeant would be very pleased about that. I'm supposed to be guarding this barn. Oh, man, what a disgrace, eh? Wasting your time in a job like that when there's folk out there committing crime waves. But it's not just a barrel. It's what's inside it. This barrel's full of whiskey. Whiskey, I'm eh? telling you, and not a drop of its paid duty. Ah, oh, by Jove, is there no end to human depravity? <laughs> You'd be surprised, Captain. Take the old man we arrested, Angus McFarlane. Now, you wouldn't think that butter would melt in his mouth. We caught him red-handed with a stuff. Oh, the devil. Oh, I hope you'll show him no mercy. Ah, uh, well, we've got him this time. <sighs> and this is the evidence. And we'll soon find out who it was meant for. I not just thought an ingenious idea. Man, you'll be fair amazed at his brilliance. Why is it, Doogie? Whilst the police man's attention is elsewhere, para handy, me and MacPhail will run across and steal the barrel. What's a real idea? But supposing he sees you? Ah, oh, but he won't, Sonny James, for he'll be too busy saving a man from drowning. It's all work! It's all work! <laughs> It'll know what. <laughs> Sounds all right to me, James. Aye, but who's the man that's drowning? Well, now, that isn't the sort of thing you could ask a stranger today. <laughs> no, it would have to be a... Uh, one of us. Aye, which one? Ah, well, no, that is a matter for discussion. And while he's out drowning, you three run out and steal the barrel. Just so. Doesn't it sound like a very long discussion? <laughs> ah, well, here's the captain. We'll let him decide. What happened then? Oh, we haven't much time. The sergeant has come over the van to take the whiskey back to the police station. Oh, we're done for, Captain. We're done for. What made them suspect Angus in the first place? Oh, doogie doogie. It's a, it's a tragic tale of human greed and a lesson to us all. <laughs> when Angus had finished the in the whiskey, he had six hundred words of barley mash to get rid of. He should have dumped it off the end of the pier. I saw he should. But he sold it for animal feeding. <laughs> the next thing, the police heard that the milkman was drunk in charge of the horse. <laughs> and was he? No, the horse was drunk in charge of the milkman. <laughs> Man, that's terrible. Not just the milk horse either. Uh, he sold it to all the farmers. I mean, there isn't a cow in the district that doesn't have a hangover. <laughs> it's fair disgraceful. But to think it says in the milk bottles that they're all TT. <laughs> While you were away, Captain, I thought of an idea. Well, no, what? Uh, well, forget about it, because I thought of a better one. Now, listen, Jim. You go and get your melody in this minute. And you, too, blow the dinghy over the side. 
Well, my lord, Jim, what for? I'm just going to give a wee concert at the end of the pier. <laughs> Sing song. When when I get the urge to sing, there is no stopping me. Uh, you'll not have any objections. Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I suppose that could be disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace with no one here to hear us except yourself and the seagulls. And if they don't like it, they'll soon let us know. <laughs> <laughs> just so, just so. I mean, there's no bylaw about making a noise in this pier. You can do anything you like in this pier. Except committing murder and swearing on Sundays. Oh, aye, but you have to. Can't he be doing these timbers any good? Ah, by Jove, you listen to the man, eh? Isn't the foot stamping the most interesting part of the performance? I mean, he's got to keep time. Oh. If only I had my other boots on, Jim, eh? These ones is too light for singing with. <laughs> oh, Captain Lock, I wish you could drink. Oh, Captain Lock, I wish you were whiskey, I would drink you dry. Now, Captain Lock is a beautiful place, and the price of the whiskey is cream. And the price of the whiskey is green. How nice it would be if the whiskey was free and the laugh fell up to the brim. Oh, come, how much you want whiskey? Come, laugh, hey. and things, there was still a half a gallon of whiskey left in the bar. <laughs> well, he didn't want it to go to waste. You mean he stuck his mouth under the hole? Ah, <laughs> oh, damn me. <clears throat> It'll all be sober before next Tuesday. By the time the police come, we should be halfway to Glasgow. <sighs> Maybe if we were to hang him upside down and let him drink. <laughs> no, that would take too long. But, Captain, we've got to dump this whiskey over the side before they arrive. No, 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 no. We might be seen. No, we've got to hide it somewhere. Yeah, and I think I know the very place. <laughs> Everything's in order, Sergeant? Good. Well, I've got the van to the top of the pier, so we'll just get this into it. Sir. <laughs> 
freezer. Yes, Sergeant. Put it down. Uh, feels as though it's empty. Is that so? Man, you're wasted in the uniform branch. I know it's empty, you know it's empty, but how did it get empty? I don't know, Sergeant. I've been here all the time. I've been sitting on it. There was a full barrel of whiskey there when I left. Fraser? Yes, Sergeant? Let me smell your breath. <laughs> no, no, it's impossible. Now, think. Has there been anybody on this beer besides you? Aye, there were two men. One of them played the melodeon, and the other one sang 26 verses of Campbellton Loch. <laughs> Honest, Sergeant. Campbellton Loch. I was <laughs> doing whiskey, Campbellton Loch. Oh, it is possible. You've been at it, no. haven't you? You drank it, didn't you? No, I'm telling you. There were two of them. Off the puffer. Puffer? What puffer? The vital spark. <laughs> Come on, Dan. Okay. This will sober you up quick. Okay. It's instant coffee. <laughs> Do you not like it? <laughs> What's going on? Come on, Craig. We've no right to search a merchant marine vessel without the warrant. Right, well, you've got the stuff hidden here somewhere. And I've just found it. Whew, the place smells like a distillery. <laughs> We wish I were destroyed. <laughs> Back here, lifting the chrome off my whistle. Now, you see, Sergeant, it's not the boat. It's the engineer that smells like a distillery. Uh, well, tell him not to breathe on me again while I'm in uniform. Uh, You've got it hidden here somewhere. Where's, where's yeah, it? I will. <laughs> now, you've searched every bit of the boat, and you haven't found it. All right. You destroyed valuable evidence, and you got away with it this time. But mind, I'm watching you. I didn't like his attitude. <laughs> hey, Captain, where's the whiskey? Never you mind, my fair. Just stand well clear when you light that boiler. <laughs> We're making good speed, Doogie. She must be doing at least ten knots. Ah, and so she should. Seeing as how the steam is 90% water and 10% whiskey. <laughs> now, don't be bitter, Doogie. At least my cousin Angus will be at his daughter's wedding, even without a grand piano. As you say, that's the main thing. There's a rowing boat coming across our bow. Gear a brass, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> like the first time I ever heard a steam puffer hiccup. 